Hello my little ravens, I hope you all have had an amazing holiday. I felt rested, but of course <laughs> exams and thesis statements now get in the way of me getting some time for relaxation. And I found some time to do this again. So, we are going to be reviewing chapter 7, The Feast of Feasts. Now it starts off with these two, Harvey and Sabrina, discussing what they're going to do for th Thanksgiving. Sabrina naturally lies, tries to make a family look as normal as possible, while Harvey says that his grandfather is coming along, so there's going to be beer drinking and deer hunting. Yeah, this is not going to cause any problems whatsoever, is it? No, 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 no. So... And we have entrails on the door. This is no, like I said, th there is nothing going to happen, surely. No, 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 no. This is going to be normal. Of course, it's not going to be normal. This is bloody Sabrina knockoff. But entrails on the door? I mean, for crying out loud, the first time I saw that, I thought, what is this thing doing? Apparently, according to Aunt Zelda, the entrails on the door are the message from the council that the family's been selected to participate in the Feast of Feasts. I don't know why that they can't just send a message with an owl or a raven like every normal series does, or maybe try to use water or mirrors to communicate the message, I don't know, but lamb entrails, yes, that's a perfect way to send a message, isn't it, you bloody idiots. Of course, the Feasts of Feasts... It's nothing more than a giant cannibalistic party. Oh my god. As if enough insults have already been thrown at real witches and the idea of witchcraft by this series. They just have to do an extra scoop of insult on top of the giant insults and injuries cake. Apparently Feast of Feasts is like mortal Thanksgiving, only... It celebrates the sacrifice a powerful witch named Freya did to save her coven during a famine. She slit her own throat and offered her body up to the coven so they could sustain themselves through the winter. I... Meh. Basically, 14 families of the coven are selected to become, perhaps, queen of the feast. And the queen, like... Freya, the Queen of the Witches, has to be eaten. And apparently it's a great honour. Quite frankly, I already think it's a great honour to be King or Queen during the Saturnalia, but not during this. Oh god, what were they thinking? Of course, only women are the ones who are going to participate, because the Dark Lord is not going to offer up precious males to be eaten. After all, females are the ones that are expendable. I swear, these people de demonize Christians. They literally call God the false god, and yet they act in the exact same way. Naturally, when Zelda offers herself up to be the representative of the Spellman family, Sabrina is rightfully indignant and objects immediately to it. I mean, this is one of the only times I'm actually on this girl's side. And one of the only times I'm not actually angry at her. So, so after that interesting dinner, the scene switches to the demoness teaching the class about family history. And asks everyone to research their family history to see where they come from. Not only to show it to the class, but also to get to know themselves better, naturally. Knowing by this point, I have already sussed out who she is. Lilith is obviously doing this for her own gain. What gain would she possibly have finding out the who these kids are? I have no idea, but there we go. And let's just say it gets interesting. Very Interesting. And what I mean by that is Harvey starts asking his grandfather about their family history. Apparently the Kinkles were not always miners and they did not always own the mine. They were a noble family back in the day called the Von Kunkels. 
And during the terrible winter of, I think it was maybe the 1700s and 1800s, if I'm thinking about the witch hunts of 1692, that these were the original von Kunkels from the same winter that Aunt Zelda, Aunt Hilda and Ambrose were referring to when Freya offered up her body so her coven could survive. And they hunted and trapped the von Kunkels and to the point where they hunted and trapped most of the wildlife that could be food for the witches as well. Now, according to the grandfather, the witches were forest people or people who just live on the outskirts of the village who were causing unease and discomfort or something like that. And it was the von Kunkels who had the obligation and the duty to dispose of them. Quite literally. Naturally, the tunnelling of the hills, which is also what they were accused of, ended up becoming the Kinkle Mines. And that is how the Von Kunkels came to own the mines. The next person we get to see who discovers her family history is Susie. And Susie finds out that her ancestor Dorothea Putnam not only dressed like a man, like she did, she also helped women, refugees, escape persecution in Scotland and fled uh, to the States. Now, further on, I don't think anyone's going to be surprised when I say these women that Dorothea helped were witches. And... When she remarked that Dorothea dressed like a man, her father simply replies, well, perhaps it was safer for a woman to dress like a man. Sometimes I feel like it still is that. And finally, we get to go to Rosa's family, where she visits her grandmother, Nana Ruth. And she discovers that... The blindness that the women in her family suffer comes from an old curse. This curse comes from the time where her ancestors accused a woman of being a witch. And her coven didn't take it so lightly. So what they did was, they cursed the women descendants to go blind. However, what this triggered was something that Nana Ruth called the cunning. The cunning is basically a form of the sixth sense. Or if you know Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, it's a variation of the dimensional scream. You get to see things and know things that other people cannot by simply touching or sensing an object or a person. And this cunning was probably triggered by the fact that the women go blind. So in fact, their mortal sight goes away and their third eye opens. For once, I don't think it's a bad deal, actually. Naturally, the weird sisters are also involved in this. Apparently, Prudence, the head of the sisterhood has been selected to be one of the 14 tributes to which Agatha and Dorcas are un un uh, disunderstandably jealous about that. And I just think this is a waste and just lazy storytelling, I mean, for crying out loud. Why do we have to go through with this? Why is this in here? Don't, don't worry, it will become clear enough. But at this point, I was just sighing in my chair thinking, I just need to get rid of this. I just need to get through this. I just need to get through this. Well, well, it turns out that when Sabrina's father was high priest, he actually banned Feast of Feasts. And that it was Father Blackwood's fault that it was reinstated due to a revelation, quote-unquote, from the Dark Lord that they should return to most of their old rituals. That's when Sabrina devises a plan 
to try to stop her aunt from going along with this barbaric ritual. And nothing bad can happen, surely. I mean, none of your plans have ever failed before, Sabrina. Naturally. Her plan goes a little up. She bursts in, charges in and demands to be the one to take her aunt's place. Zelda is shocked, understandably angry and also humiliated in front of the entire coven. However, she does not object to Sabrina taking a place as Sabrina had hoped she would. The witches burn the paper to reveal that Sabrina actually has the paper with the orange, yellow and red fire, while Prudence has the paper with golden fire and white fire, which means she becomes queen of the feast. Naturally, afterwards, Zelda reprimands Sabrina, as per bloody usual, saying that she was very close to becoming sacrificed instead, and that... Sabrina hasn't gotten off scot-free because she's drawn the lot of the handmaiden. The handmaiden is basically the shepherd while the queen is the lamb. She has to tend to the lamb before it gets slaughtered, basically. Having to tend on the queen's every whim. Ambrose, however, has the humility and humour to point out the irony of the situation that the girl who harrowed her is now literally getting the just desserts by becoming the dessert. <laughs> it's harsh, but it's true, though. So then Queen Prudence arrives and orders um, Sabrina to make her a hot milk bath and to get her some macaroons. I will admit, at this point, I got a little jealous because I love a bath with macaroons. And macaroons especially, I love them. Especially the pink ones. Anyway, um, drifting off, I'm a little hungry myself at the moment. Um, it's at this point that Sabrina starts asking Prudence questions about her faith and whether or not she actually believes in what all of this nonsense says. And Prudence does. And it's at this point that I still think her th way of thinking and her devotion, I guess, is a little frightening. It's a little concerning, but I also have to admire Prudence at this point because she's steadfast, she's unwavering, and she is sincere. As much as I hate this character, in her faith she is sincere. And Sabrina's faith in this church is not steadfast. In fact, I don't think she has any faith in the church. She doesn't have any faith in the Dark Lord. She only has faith in herself and in the people she cares about. Which is just as valiant and just as admirable, but also just as valid. I mean, no faith in this case, is more worthy than the other. I mean, prudence, yes, it's definitely worrying, and I think that the same can be said for certain other people in real life, that their blind faith or their steadfast faith can sometimes land them in trouble. Unfortunately... This doesn't get any better because Sabrina gets woken up in the middle of the night by a loud ruckus. And let's just say, I have known about witch orgies and, and certain sexual preferences, but let's just say Sabrina walks into one giant, massive... Yeah, let's just say orgy. Let's, let's keep it at that. And I just sat there thinking, I don't know whether to actually dis be distasteful of it or laugh or wishing that I could join in. Because it's that sort of scene where you're like, what am I supposed to think here? What, 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 what does this bring to the story? I mean, yes... Prudence is clearly queen, so therefore she could do whatever the hell she likes before she gets eaten. But, but, uh, what? Well, it doesn't serve any purpose. It just doesn't serve any 
purpose other than making the audience feel awkward. <laughs> Sabrina then goes to school and entices Prudence to come with her, using boys to bully, boys to seduce, that sort of thing, you know, the normal things that you entice a witch girl to go to school. And Prudence agrees, for once. So, Principal Hawthorne actually acts like a creepy bastard and tries to entice Lilith into coming to his house at Thanksgiving. Thankfully, Lilith said, <laughs> no. Uh, Sabrina takes Prudence to see her friends, Harvey, Susie and Roz. And the three of them, well, technically five of them, start to talk about the project that Miss Wardwell, quote-unquote, gave them. So, apparently they were first talking about Susie's ancestor, Dorothea. And Susie said that she helped, naturally tells them what she discovered. And Prudence, were, for once, actually seems to be interested and says, Oh, yeah, we talked about Dorothea Putnam. She was a real hero. To those women, and obviously to the Church of Night, because she inadvertently helped witches. Unfortunately, that's when they talk about Harvey's ancestors in front of Prudence. Bad idea. Turns out that Harvey's family were witch hunters. All because they hunted down those women and the hill people. That scared the town. Naturally, Prunes being the conservative witch that she is, tells Sabrina when she's being dragged out of the library that those women demand blood retribution. And that she and her sisters have a law when it comes to witch hunters. Kill them first before they kill you, that sort of thing. It's just so medieval that I think, hey, why am I even surprised at this point? This whole show has been shit. Why am I sitting here even hoping for a good ounce for once? Just one good episode, one good episode. Is that too much to ask? Apparently so. Bloody writers. They then get interrupted by Miss Wardwell, who takes them into her office. Sabrina tries to convince her to convince Prudence to tell her not to go through with it. And Prudence is like... I'm going to get everlasting life anyway, so why are we still discussing this? And Sabrina tries to convince Prudence. Prudence turns her, her nose down at the off and when she realises that Miss Wardwell is an excommunicate. And then Miss Wardwell said, well, you might not want to listen to me, but you might want to listen to a witch who was once queen of the feast until she rejected the crown herself. Prudence is naturally shocked by this. And they said, well, let's go and see her. And she says, fine, but I want to take my sisters with me. So all of them go to find this witch called Desmelda. They quickly go back to the really not in detail sub-story of the Kemper family. Mrs. Kemper had come to visit because it's Connor's favourite holiday to pick up his ashes in his urn. Ambrose asks if the police have found any leads. Of course they haven't. Why would they? The, apparently this murder is not important enough to resolve. But apparently Mrs. Kemper found some of Connor's old witchcraft things. And immediately Ambrose offers to take them in and have a look at them. Then... Naturally, we see Miss Wardwell, Sabrina and the Weird Sisters go into Moon Valley to find Esmelda. Well, Sabrina asks Desmelda what made her run from the Dark Lord, and Desmelda adamantly answers that she did not run from the Dark Lord, but she ran away from her High Priest. Apparently, all the witches that took part in the lottery of her year were all... 14 year old girls apparently at that time nobody questioned anything they thought it was just normal until before the feast that um, the high priest said that he had a revelation from the dark lord that he had to initiate desmelda 
but before he could um, rape her, she ran from him and into the woods and has never turned back. So, not only do we have cannibalism, but we also have pedophilia come up again. Seems like not only the Catholic Church has this problem. They then have another debate. Prunes and Sabrina, that one answer asks, uh, says it's not Father Blackwood's fault that this happened. He's not asking us to do that. And Sabrina said, yeah. You just said it yourself. It's Father Blackwood who's asking this of you, not the Dark Lord. Father Blackwood is a righteous messenger. Yes, but he's not divine. He is mortal flesh and blood like we are. And we shouldn't always take his words into account. Unfortunately, the Kinkle family are also in Moon Valley for a hunt. Then they spot a deer. While the father wants to shoot it, the grandfather says no, it's Harvey's first hunt, it's his kill. Prunes then argues the case that she recognises that Desmelda's high priest had an agenda. Bad one at that, but he had an agenda. She points out that Father Blackwood has been nothing but good to her, has cared for her and has raised her as his own daughter. Well, like his own daughter. And then Sabrina says the insidious nature is amplified because of the fact that this is true and the fact that this is happening in the first place, to which Desmelda clearly nods in agreement. It's clear that even witches of the old ways who are still faithful do not like this feast. And quite frankly, I do not like this feast for being even included in this entire sh shitty little series. Then there is a loud shot. Desmelda starts to panic. The other witches are startled. They promised Desmelda they didn't bring anybody else to this place, but Desmelda doesn't care and tells them never to come back. They go out to try to find what had been shot, and it turns out what was shot wasn't just any old stag, but it was a familiar. Then Miss Wardwell quickly pulls out some yarn and say, We are... Take an edge of this, remain quiet, don't move. We're going to pull the wool literally over their eyes. And this is what the witches do. They see the Kinkle family coming and they wait until they leave before removing the yarn. To which the weird sisters immediately said, we are going to have to seek blood retribution for this killing. Your bow is a witch hunter and we need to deal with these stupid witch hunters before they kill again. And then Sabrina's like, Harvey didn't kill it. Harvey did not do this. And then Prudence then says, what makes your faith in this mortal boy more valid than my faith in the Dark Lord? Admittingly, she has got a bit of a point. Next scene shows Zelda getting an urgent phone call from Lady Blackwood. Lady Blackwood comes. Harvey comes to see Sabrina and said, I couldn't do it. I couldn't... I couldn't kill that deer that my grandfather wanted me to. I mean, I tried to, but I just couldn't. I mean, I'm not a killer. And immediately Sabrina is just... You could see the... Bloody <laughs> relief seep over her, really. And I'm s and I'm sitting here thinking, if you're so relieved, you, there must have been a tiny part of you that thought he did it. I don't think at this point it matters. She puts a protection spell on him and then goes into the house. And Zelda is flustered and immediately orders Sabrina to get the pot of tea that she has already made. Turns out Lady Blackwood is just getting the usual mania that some pregnant women get. When Sabrina pours the tea, immediately Lady Blackwood is like, that's not poison, is it? Well, of course it's not poison, but it's just a calming thing to, to help you calm your nerves. But at this point... Is where it starts, this whole thing starts to get a little interesting. Because it turns out that Lady Blackwood 
may have been responsible for this picking in the first place, this Queen of the Feast picking. Because she said to Sabrina, you understand, don't you? You understand why I had to do it. They are plotting against me. They want to kill my babies. It turns out she's referring to the Weird Sisters. Her plan was to kill one and render the others useless with one being dead. It turns out that any other children Faustus might have have a legitimate claim to the throne of High Priest. And that what Lady Meng, uh, Lady Blackwood meant by her children must come first is that they should have the first right to the title that their father has. But any bastard child, whether they are male or female, have the legitimate claim to the throne, whether or not they were born in an out-of-wedlock union. It was at this point that Sabrina went to see Prudence and told Prudence that there is a possibility that what she said about Lord Blackwood raising her like a daughter, that he might actually be her father. Sabrina then points out that despite the bastard nature of her birth, Prudence could still lay claim to the Church of Night, the school and everything else that comes with it. And that the only way that she could do that was to get rid of the legitimate heirs first. And also point out the very convenient nature that it would be so very easy to enchant the box to pick Prudence's queen and have her murdered in front of the entire coven. So, in order to try to find out the truth, they're going to invite the high priest and his wife for dinner. This should be interesting. It switches to Miss Wardwell and her familiar raven Stolas having a quiet feast in. Naturally, she uses her pyromancy to create the fire in the fireplace. And I don't think it's the pizza that she's interested in. Let's just leave it at that. When I say that, it was delivered by a delivery boy. Lilith only feasts, well, according to some legends on the f flesh of men. Anyway, apparently the cake that Aunt Hilda made is a truth cake. Using her mother's secret recipe when she thought her father was having an affair. So Sabrina takes the truth cake into the parlour. Let's just say that truth cake should be given to every single police station in every single country because that cake works instantaneously. Lady Blackwood all but confesses immediately that it was her who bewitched the box to ensure that Prunes would be queen. And that her motives, means and opportunity were exactly as Sabrina thought. That... It was very convenient for her, and she did it because Prunes and her sisters are Faustus's bastards. Unfortunately, she was only right in saying Prunes is Faustus's daughter. Dorcas and Agatha are not. And she also calls her husband a voracious slut, and that every bastard he creates is a problem for her children. My favourite part of this entire series, by the way, because... <laughs> While this was happening, the first time I watched it, I just couldn't breathe because I was laughing too hard. So, holding the truth as hostage, Sabrina tells him that instead of reconvening the coven to find a new queen, he can say that the, drag uh, the Dark Lord had given a new revelation that feast day should never be held again. Devious little blighter, but hey, at least we never have to deal with this again. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't quite go according to plan, because Mildred, one of the witches in the earlier drawing, takes her knife and slits her own throat. Unfortunately, most of the witches are so ravenous that uh, they tear her body to sunder. Completely asunder. Uh, let's just say I could have done 
without watching this stupid episode. I have no idea what the purpose of this was. It doesn't further the story. It just makes me even more mad and, quite frankly, sick in my stomach. And I haven't even had breakfast yet. Oh, that's it, my little ravens. I'm sorry, I probably left out a bunch of stuff, but... I just cannot watch this episode any longer. I'll see you guys in the next one. And I promise you, I will upload a whole lot more frequently than I did for the past month. Month or two, actually. Till the next one, my little ravens.